The most common Victorian styles that we'll be looking at today were Queen Anne and Italianate. And also, a lot of houses are mixtures of styles. That doesn't mean that there's, there's anything wrong with it. Often, um, they, they take the best of a couple of different styles and combine them to create um, a, a new statement. There are a lot of nice older homes on this block, particularly on the north side. Uh, the ones on the north side, before Santa Barbara was more built up, had more of a view and might possibly have had an ocean view as well. So let's get started. First of all, um, let's look down at the sidewalk. Uh, I wrote about this in my, my 1915 book, and if you've done much walking around Santa Barbara, you've probably noticed various signatures stamped in the sidewalks by concrete contractors. Charles C. Pike, C. C. Pike, lived from 1850 to 1934, and he went one step further with his signature, and he created a bit of public art that is still here for us to smile at 100 years later. His name was Pike, and he has the shape of a fish. Two articles in the January 1915 newspapers here in Santa Barbara praised the excellent piece of work on local sidewalks done by Mr. C.C. Pike. Mr. Pike builds a sidewalk to stay. Pike's signature was an outline of a fish on a plaque with his name inside it. There are a number of these still on our sidewalks and Pike's catchy slogan was, there's nothing like a permanent sidewalk to add value to the property. Now, how many other contractors take such pride in their work that they actually sign it? Or, or did it count as advertising? So as we walk along, watch for other signs of Mr. Pike and let the rest of us know about it. And certainly as you walk around Santa Barbara, take a look down at the sidewalks. People who walk uh, notice other things that drivers do not. One other thing to look for in the sidewalks is the names of streets stamped in the sidewalks. We take street signs for granted, but I wrote a column uh, called Way Back When for Ed Hat, and in 1917, there was a push to have street signs, mostly to help visitors and tourists. So apparently there were no street signs at that time, only the names stamped in the sidewalk. And some of, the, some of the places, the names stamped in the sidewalk are the old names. Above Mission Street, the streets used to be named 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 4th, and 5th. Uh, and now there are other names, but some people have saved the stamp, the old stamped names and put them in the parkway. So that's something else to look for as you're walking around. Now, the probable date on this house is about 1887. The presumed owner was Mrs. Clara W. Lunt, an artist who lived here from 1888 until the early 1920s. This is a nice example of an Italianate house. The roof is fairly flat on top. And in fact, the very top up here, whoops, I'm not, oh, here's my cursor. Up here, um, Italianates are often flat on top, and sometimes there was also a tower up there. Uh, and they might have had a cupola up there originally. Uh, it would, this house would have had a great view because the cupola um, was uh, wide open, but um, the cupolas are often torn down in these old houses because they're up where the weather is and they often get weathered. And I've heard um, they're one of the first things to need repairs. And I've heard some people say that when it got too ratty, they just tore it off and pushed it over the side. Uh, now notice there are, whoops, there are decorative brackets under the eaves here. There are no rounded shapes on the body of the house, but we do have a, a nice bay window here. And there, notice there are lots of these little marks here. These are uh, kind of look like teeth and they're actually called dentals. Uh, there are not a lot of fancy shingles on Italianate houses. Okay. The porch is only around the door. It kind of looks like up here, there may be a sleeping porch. One of the, uh, the big health problems in the 1800s was tuberculosis. And people believed that sleeping outside in the fresh air 
was very helpful for that. Let's see. Uh, the gray and white color on this house is kind of a, a colonial scheme. Uh, Williamsburg houses uh, back in uh, Virginia were thought to be um, uh, white, uh, thought to be gray with white trim. More recent color analysis has um, revealed the fact that the houses back in Williamsburg were actually had a lot of brighter colors than we assumed. Let's walk on to our next house. This is uh, 30 West Valerio. The earliest known resident here was Elwood F. Herbert. He was a dentist. This is a, a colonial revival house with a center entrance, but it's also a little bit of a four square, um, which is, uh, describes the overall shape. And it has uh, the, the wide eaves and uh, the windows come right up under the eaves here as well. The date is about 1900. In 1908, the house was converted to a duplex and I'm not sure what it is today. Uh, there are some uh, unusual shingles here up under the gable. Uh, this is kind of a holdover from the Queen Anne style and I'll be talking more about that in a minute. Um, See, this also has some dentals. Oops, I'm having trouble with my cursor. Some dentals here up under the eaves here. Uh, and they have round columns. Now round columns on the porch are uh, typical of colonial revival homes. And now these have fairly wide windows. One way to judge the age of a house to see is it 1800s or 1900s is to look at the, the width of the windows. On the Victorian homes that we'll be looking at, the windows were not this wide. Uh, this, I don't know whether it was, um, it was probably some kind of a technological development um, that allowed the windows to be this wide. But that's one thing to look at when you're looking at houses. All right, our next house at 32 West Valerio was built in 1903. It belonged to the Eberly family for more than 70 years. So you kind of figure it's, it's a very comfortable and, and pleasant house to live in if the same family is living in it for that long. They were living there from about 1903 to 1974. Now this again is a, a bit of a colonial revival. If you look at the, at the, uh, the, round, the round column on the porch. Uh, it does have a hipped roof we really can't see that from here, but a hipped roof, it's H-I-P-P-E-D, a hipped roof has a shape like a pyramid. Um, kind of like um, Queen Anne homes, we have uh, shingles on the, on the second floor and clabbered on the first floor. So that's a, a bit of a holdover from the Victorian era. There's a nice um, sandstone uh, along the sidewalk, which we can't see in this picture, but if you uh, decide to walk along um, Victoria, uh, Valerio, you will notice that. Now the shutters are typical of colonial revival. So the shutters and the round columns here uh, are typical here. And this one does have a nice bay window on the second floor here. It has wide eaves with exposed rafters underneath, which are more typical of craftsmen. So this one's a little bit of a, of a, of a combination of Queen Anne and colonial revival and craftsmen but it's still a very attractive house. All right, 36 West Valerio. The estimated date on this is about 1892. And this is, <clears throat> excuse me, also called the Eberly House. Uh, it was also owned by the same families. Uh, the original owner was W.H. Eberly, who was a blacksmith. So that name may sound familiar to you. The family owned the house until the late 1920s. And this is a Queen Anne house. Uh, Queen Anne color schemes uh, are often um, kind of uh, olives and dark green um, or uh, mustard and um, a dark red. This again has the kind of the colonial color scheme. 
which is the, the gray with the white trim. This one also has a hipped roof, which again, shaped like a pyramid. And it has a very interesting pagoda-like um, trim on the, on the shape on the front porch here with some dentals underneath. So uh, it's a very interesting combination. Uh, the second four floor windows um, have a, I keep losing my cursor here. Uh, the second floor windows uh, at the top have kind of a, a lancet design. A lancet is kind of like a, a the, the top of a spear. Okay, oh, there we go. Keep it over here. Um, this is a Victorian house, but again, Victorian uh, refers to the age and not the style. And as you'll notice from the sign, this is now used as the Cheshire Cat Inn. Uh, and the inn also includes a house uh, at 32 um, West Valerio, as well as some, some craftsman cottages across the street. All right, 114 West Valerio. Um, this was built in the late 1920s, and you can kind of tell that by looking at the style. After the earthquake, uh, the Spanish colonial revival was, was very much the popular style. And then you can, again, you can kind of look at this and, and, and guess that it's, it's it was built after the earthquake. Um, I'm, I'm guessing that the motto for this house is, you can never have too many arches. Um, the color here is um, very suitable for a house of this type, kind of a, a pale pink or peach. Um, there are uh, railings under the windows. And where's my cursor again? Okay, the railings under the windows and over the porch here. Uh, which are again very um, uh, characteristic of um, the, uh, the Spanish colonial revival style. Uh, this one also has a tile roof. We didn't have, we didn't see that on the other houses that we've seen. Um, the porch over the door is a little bit uh, similar to the um, George Washington Smith style. If you recall, on De La Guerra Plaza, the uh, newspaper building there um, has a, a similar design of the, uh, uh, the, the, the railing over the, the porch like that. And this one also has stucco walls, which we haven't seen on the other homes so far. All right, walking down the street some more. And by the way, we'll be walking down Valerio. And when we get to the end, uh, we'll turn around and come back up the street. So we will be getting the houses on the odd numbered side. So 208 West Valerio. The assessor's date on this is either 1867 or, or perhaps 1876. Uh, that's a guesstimate. This uh, is a, a cottage style and it has some nice uh, color scheme for, for a cottage. This one also has a hipped roof, which has a shape like a pyramid. Um, this is on the corner of Valerio and De, and, um, De La Vina. De La Vina was the main route out of Santa Barbara heading toward, heading toward Goleta. State Street only went up to about where Constance is today. And the reason for that is that, and you don't really notice this too much when you're driving, but when you're walking, you notice it, that you, as you go up State Street and you get to Constance, then the street goes downhill. And it was considered too steep for the older cars at that time. So State Street stopped at about Constant, Constance, and De La Vina was the main route out of town. And De La Vina um, was also the northern part of De La Vina, like, well, maybe north of Valerio, started to be called Hollister on old maps. Okay, 212 West Valerio. Uh, the assessor's date on this is about 1910. Uh, this is a craftsman bungalow, but kind of a, a high style craftsman. A lot of craftsmen are sort of one and a half stories, but this one uh, is sort of a head and shoulders above the rest, so to speak. Uh, it's painted with um, sort of gray and white again. Um, it has wide eaves. And let's see the wide here with the, the decorative braces under the eaves. Uh, and there are um, uh, there's a porch up here that looks like it might have been a sleeping porch. Uh, there are um, kind of the, the Queen Anne styling. There's uh, 
shingles on the second floor and clabbert on the first floor. Now this one has square porch posts, square porch posts or posts that are square and sort of tapered to the top are um, what you would expect to see on uh, craftsman homes. Um, in general, round columns are for colonial revival, but the square columns are for craftsmen. Um, we have um, the windows here are, are three, there's three, three or four panes on the top and one on the bottom. Again, notice the wide window. That sort of uh, shows you that it's, it's built after about 1900 when they had the, the technology, or, or maybe it was, the co it was cost effective to do wider windows at that point. But it was fairly common to have four, um, three or four smaller panes across the top and then a wider one at the bottom. And this one does have a nice stone wall in front. Now this home, um, if you're interested, um, I did write about it in my Great House Detective column for The Independent. So if you go to the internet and search out Great House Detective, uh, uh, my archives will show up and you can read more about this house. This house is owned by an architect, which it kind of makes sense because it is kind of a, a high style craftsman house. 222 West Valerio. Uh, the date on this is about 1910. Uh, the style is a uh, four square and it's sometimes called prairie four square. We don't have a lot of prairie homes here in the, in the, on the West Coast. Um, and particularly once uh, we had the earthquake, then people kind of switched from craftsmen to um, uh, Spanish colonial revival. Uh, but this is, would be called a four square and, or sometimes it's called contractor's prairie. And there are a couple of homes like this. I actually wrote about another one on uh, mission in my column. So you can check that out if you're interested. Um, this one has uh, the wide eaves with the decorative brackets underneath. And again, the wide windows, notice the windows. Um, and it has on the porch, and you can't really see it very well here because of the vine, um, what's called a Chicago style window, which is a, a three part window. It's a, a large window and then two smaller ones on either side of it. And this one does have a, a wraparound porch. All right, I think I'm done with that one. There are round columns on the porch here, okay? and they, they actually do have uh, 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 Corinthian columns on them, Corinthian capitals here, but you can't really see that in this picture. All right, 226 West Valerio. This was built about 1927. It is a craftsman bungalow, fairly typical. It's one, looks like it's one story. Um, it has what's called a cross gable roof. A gable roof has a sh shape like an ups upside down V. And so this is cross gable. So part of the roof is going this way and the other part is going the other way. So it's called a cross gable roof. There are um, exposed rafters here and decorative brackets under the eaves here. And notice the porch columns it looks like they're a stone on the bottom part and then a sort of a, a tapered square at the top part here. And that's very typical of craftsmen. Um, oh, actually I see from my notes that the, um, the stone on the columns is actually not, or the bottom part of the column is actually not stone. It is um, shaped concrete. There's not a lot of this in Santa Barbara. There's actually a house on Bath Street below a Carrillo that is all made out of this concrete block that are shaped to look like stone. We have so much uh, Santa Barbara sandstone here that you don't see a lot of it here. There's a lot of it in, in other places like Chicago, but actually it's a, a poured concrete block. Um, and if you look at, at a house, or you can see that the shapes uh, of the concrete is, is all the same. That's how you can identify it. But, but actually um, Sears Roebuck, used to sell a kit where you could make your own concrete blocks, I guess in the, in the basement over the winter of your house or something, and then, and then build your house in the spring. But uh, kind, of an, kind of an interesting uh, story there. Moving on here, uh, 230 West Valerio. This one was built about 1913. And uh, this is also Craftsman, 
It looks like it might be one and a half stories here. One and a half stories means on the second floor, it, you don't have a full floor. You have maybe, maybe the, the master bedroom or something. Um, this one does have a double gable roof. So you have two gables in the front here. Um, it has a wonderful door. I uh, can't really see the door very well here. It looks newer, um, but um, it's nice that the door, it's probably replaced an older door, um, is, is still in the same style. And it's very nice now that it's possible to buy uh, craftsman stuff that's new. I would say 20 years ago, if you had a craftsman house and, and you needed a new door, you, you would not be able to find something uh, similar, the, the same type of style. Uh, but starting uh, about 20 years ago, a craftsman kind of, kind of came back into style. And I think that's wonderful. Uh, this home, notice the comb has very wide eaves with the decorative brackets under the eaves. And this one has the square porch posts. Okay, that's typical of craftsmen. And there's some very nice, uh, interesting trim around the windows and the doors here. They're kind of uh, very distinctive looking. 234 West Valerio. This was built a little later, about 1930, in one of the newer ones that I'll be talking about on this, on this, in our walking tour. Um, this is an unusual uh, style in Santa Barbara. It's certainly more common in the United States. It was uh, in other parts back east. It was common from about 1890 to about 1940. This style is called Tudor Revival. And supposedly um, one of the um, reasons why it became popular was that uh, American soldiers serving in World War I in Europe got a, a glance at some of the older architecture there and, and came back and, and thought, gee, it would be great to have a house kind of like that one that I saw in the, in the countryside in, in France or Belgium or something like that. Uh, the Tudor Revival, as, as you can kind of tell from the name, uh, is meant to uh, invoke um, uh, centuries old buildings in England. Um, and this kind of style um, with the, the outside uh, timbering here is called half timbering. Um, the, uh, these boards uh, now are, 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 are decorative, but in some of the older houses, if you think of you know, stuff like Shakespeare in, in Stratford-on-Avon, the, 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 uh, the braces there are actually supporting members. Here, they're just decorative. Now, this does have some craftsman influence with the, with the wide eaves and the, uh, the brackets under the eaves here. Um, over here, there is what's called a hipped gable. It's kind of a gable, a little gable roof, and like the top is cut off. And that's also kind of part of the, uh, uh, meant to uh, invoke the, uh, the Middle, e Middle Ages type styling. Um, this uh, portion up here uh, is called a dormer, a dormer window. And dormers, uh, if you think back to your high school French or even Spanish, uh, dormir means to sleep. And dormer windows are generally in the bedrooms where obviously people are sleeping. And this house is uh, painted very uh, appropriate colors. All right, 312 West Valerio. Uh, just by looking at it, you can kind of figure that it was built sometime after the earthquake. Uh, this, is, uh, this was built about 1930. Uh, the style is what we're used to seeing uh, in many places in Santa Barbara, the Spanish colonial revival style. And this was the most popular style, um, certainly in the 20s, 30s, and, and, and even today. Uh, it has very uh, appropriate colors, uh, kind of a, an off-white with the, uh, the teal around the windows here. Uh, the teal uh, color is actually called Pearl Chase Blue. Uh, it really has nothing to do with um, uh, old Spanish colonial houses, but uh, supposedly the story is that uh, Pearl Chase uh, went to a, a, a painting uh, expert and said, okay, we have these houses that are sort of a, a light stucco color, and we have the, the, the dark bricks colored uh, tile roofs, what would be a nice accent color? And according to the story, uh, they, they mixed up kind of a, a smoky teal color. And um, that's why it's called uh, Pearl Chase Blue. Now this house has a, a flat roof 
with uh, a parapet around it here. Uh, it does have the red tile roof. There are some nice arches here on the porch. Um, and notice the wide windows. Again, that's a clue to the age of the house. And very nicely, the wall that uh, joins the sidewalk here matches the house. Um, and um, uh, the, the, the cactus here is kind of a nice touch. Uh, 3, 8, uh, let's see, no, 314 West Valerio. Okay. Uh, the assessor's date on this is about 1925. Uh, this is a, um, a craftsman bungalow. Uh, has good colors, um, except perhaps for the white trim. Uh, I would say on a craftsman, kind of tan with uh, dark brown or dark red trim would be more um, uh, authentic. Uh, again, um, like a lot of craftsmen, we have the wide eaves and the decorative brackets over the eaves and the exposed rafters here. Interesting windows here with the, uh, the treatment on the top here. Very nice. Okay. Um, this particular window here on the right is what would be called Chicago style. We have one large window in the, in the middle and then flanked by two smaller narrow win or narrower windows on either side. And it's kind of hard to see the, the lamp here, but the lamp is, uh, matches the style. As I said, it's, it's fairly easy now to buy craftsman style um, items in, in the hardware stores. Now here we have one at um, 318 West Valerio. Uh, it's unclear about the date of this house, but um, in it's, uh, I would say it's Queen Anne style but the windows are kind of large for Queen for, for the 1800s. So maybe it was built later. Maybe this part was added on. It's, it's sometimes unclear the age of the house, but um, I was surprised at how, how wide the windows were. Um, this has a fairly good uh, color scheme, sort of a darker color. Um, in general though, I would, this, this, usually this kind of house would have a, of a darker trim as well. It looks like there's a little bit of, uh, Kind of maroon coloring here uh, and that's kind of nice too. Um, over here on the left this gable also has the, the clipped corner as we saw back on the, uh, the Tudor Revival home. Um, this is now divided into apartments. I don't, I don't really care if a house is, is divided or, or single owner occupied and I'm just happy that the house is still here. All right, 330 West Valerio. We're getting down toward the bottom of the street here. Um, this was built about 1915. Uh, again, a craftsman style bungalow. And, <coughs> excuse me. If you look at the shape of the roof, I talked about the width of the windows as a way of, of judging the age of a house. Another way to judge it is by looking at the slope of the roof. This has a fairly shallow slope. If I go back and look at the Queen Anne, look how steep uh, the shape of, of the roof is. So that's another clue um, to the uh, style of a house. Um, let's see. Uh, this one has a, a nice uh, uh, square post on the porch that are tapered here. Um, and um, ta -ta -ta -ta. Let's see, here we are. Uh, the porch, uh, <coughs> the porch ceiling, which you really can't see here, is something called Vic. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm gonna have to have a little glug of wine here. The porch ceiling is something um, called Victorian bead board. This is uh, something that was traditionally used on the ceilings of porches um, of homes. It's, it's basically a, a, a widish piece of, of wood with a narrow piece next to it. And that would be sort of the paired grouping. The, uh, the inside of porches in a, a lot of Victorian homes was often originally painted pale blue. And the thought was that would uh, look like the sky and discourage wasps from building nests. I'm not sure if that really worked or not. 
now, as I said, we're getting down toward the end of the street. And here we are. Uh, the freeway is just on the other side. There's a, a couple of more houses uh, on the other side of the bridge. But um, the Valerio Street Bridge here was constructed in 1964. So it's not very old. It is one of only two remaining wooden bridges that carry vehicles in the city of Santa Barbara. The other wooden bridge is, and I'll tell you at the end, I'll see though, if anybody can tell me where the other wooden bridge in the city of Chicago is. And it's not the city of Chicago. Huh, I'm a little, little out of date here. In the city of Santa Barbara, there are only two wooden bridges that carry cars. Okay. The other one is, and if anybody knows it, um, you can put it in the Q&A, um, but um, you'll get, if you're right, uh, the first one will get five Betsy points for that. Okay, see if anybody knows. Uh, it's very nice if you walk along this to see there's a natural creek bed. Uh, it's not the concrete channel that you see in a number of places. And there are a number of native plants growing down there. So. And at this point, we will, um, oops, here. Let me see if I'm right. Okay. Okay, here's a very um, interesting little house. Um, it's uh, a, an, an older house. I'm not sure of the date. I'm guessing that... Um, the windows were added later because they are so wide. Um, it's a very um, interesting uh, little house. I would call it cottage style uh, with kind of a hipped roof with a little bit of a, of a gable at the top. It looks like it's a vent. Maybe there's another room up there. I'm not sure, but a very cute little house. Um, here's another um, craftsman style house. Um, let's see here, checking my notes here. Um, it's uh, kind of got the gray and white color scheme that um, would be uh, typical of a, of a colonial house. And it's, there's nothing wrong with the house being painted uh, different colors at all. So um, it has a cute little uh, dormer here. And remember dormers are for, for bedrooms. Um, with the exposed rafters. Okay. And I'm, I'm a little curious about the, the, the windows here. I'm guessing it might have been one large window. Um, and perhaps uh, it now is able to be, uh, to be opened. And that's why uh, it's been divided up like this. 335 West Valerio. This was built, um, and you can probably guess that it was built after the earthquake. It was built about 1927. Um, it's kind of a different style here for Santa Barbara. Uh, if you've ever been to say Santa Fe, New Mexico, this, this house would look um, very much uh, a part of that area. Um, it's called, uh, I would call it Southwestern style. Um, it is a multifamily building. Uh, it has rough stucco walls it's painted a very good color for the, for, for the type of house. And there's some, some nice cactus growing in the, in the yard here that very much complement the style. <clears throat> All right, now 315 West Valerio. Um, I'm, I'm hoping you're all been good students here. You can kind of tell by the slope of the roof that it's an older house. Uh, this one was built about 1892. Um, up under the gable here, and it's kind of hard to see in, with the lighting. Oh, where's my cursor? Up under the gable, there are what are called fish scale shingles. And the fish scale shingles have a curved part on the bottom of them. So it kind of looks like the scales of a fish. Very often on, on a Victorian house, the most complicated part would be up right under the gable um, where I think where everybody can see the, the nice uh, uh, carpentry work that you have on your house. Um, the siding here is what is called shiplap siding. And notice the windows. I've been talking about windows a lot. This one has the tall, narrow, paired windows. We're not seeing the wide windows that we've been seeing on some of the newer houses. This one has um, a nice bay in the front. Not sure if it's original or not. 
This one had, has, and I can't see it here, it has two doors to the home, one in the center for the family and one over on the side for business. This is often what they did if they had um, a business in the home, maybe uh, an attorney or a, a doctor or someone like that. The front door in the center was for the family and the side door was for the patients or the, or the clients. 311 West Valeria. The, uh, this was built about 1900. Uh, notice the shape of the roof. Uh, it's got a fairly low pitch uh, compared to the one that we just saw that was a lot steeper. Um, this one, uh, it's very, it's easier to see the fish scale shingles here up under the gable. And there's an interesting sort of uh, carving up over the, the top window here. Right, so let's see. Uh, there is an addition over the side that's newer. Um, and around the, the door, you can't really see in this picture, there are what are what's called bull's eye molding. Um, what this is, and you see it inside houses and outside houses. So you have a, a fairly straight piece across the top and along the sides, but joining in the corners are, are sort of what looks like a, almost like a target. It's a circle and another circle and another circle inside. And that's called bull's eye molding, which is a, a very nice touch. Uh, here's, uh, let's see, 227 Valerio. Uh, this was built about 1887. Uh, again, look at the slope on the roof. This one um, is actually uh, a simple uh, Italianate style. And um, it has the, the paired brackets under the eaves. The um, Craftsman style does have brackets under the eaves, but the Italianate usually has them in pairs. Okay, you can see that here. This was built about, uh, say, about 1887. Now, an interesting historical point, this was the Alfred Hayward House. Um, Hayward and Mazal were two very, uh, had a, uh, a photographic studio here. And if you look at a lot of the um, uh, photographs of Santa Barbara in the 1800s, you will notice that they were built, that they were, the photos were taken by Hayward and Mazal. Um, this one also has the shiplap siding. And again, notice the windows. We have tall, narrow windows. We don't have the wide windows. This one has a very nice uh, ornate porch, uh, porch post. And if you look over the door, there is a, a transom. It might be a window or it might be a, a solid piece, but it's able to be um, flipped out so you can get a breeze coming through but still be able to keep the door closed and keep some privacy and, and also some security. Uh, again, this is another uh, gray one with white trim. Um, back in the, uh, when it was built, it was probably more somber colors, maybe olives, mustard, uh, maroon, or something of, of that uh, uh, color scheme. I'm gonna move things around here. I'm not sure if, I, I can't see the date on my screen. I, not, not the date, the, uh, the address on my screen. Can someone tell me what the address is out there? 223 West Valerio. 223 West Valerio, okay, thank you. Yep. All right. This is uh, an interesting um, home that's um, uh, uh, a, a kind of a simple Italianate style. And I can tell that by looking at the roof. It has a hipped roof with um, a flat portion on top. And this might possibly have had um, a, uh, a tower on the top. That was typical. And, and so it might have at this point, it might have had some kind of a view. Oh, I see the 223 down there. Okay. Okay, 215 West Valerio. Okay, I can see that one. Uh, this, the, the, uh, this was built about um, 1887. Um, this is also uh, built by Edwin J. Hayward. Uh, it has a, a had as a his, sorry, it has a hipped roof uh, with, with some gables on the side. Okay, so here's the hipped roof in the middle. And then here are, 
Here's the gabled roofs on the side. There. Um, let's see. Um, this is a nice example of uh, middle class housing for, for professional people. And again, I call this um, Italianate because of the decorative brackets over the eaves. And this sort of a, an interesting square or sort of diamond shaped window is also typical of Italianate. The, um, the, the decorative uh, trim here on the porch, the, the curved parts would have been made with a scroll saw. A scroll saw is kind of like a jigsaw in that it kind of goes up and down and, and allows uh, you to cut curves. All right, 129 West Valeria. This one was built about 1910. Uh, this is a, a, a four square or also a, a contractor's prairie. It has a square shape and a hipped roof. And it has the wide eaves and the decorative brackets underneath. And this one also has a horizontal band under the windows and the windows go right up under the eaves here. That's kind of typical of prairie style. And as I mentioned, we don't have too many examples of, of prairie style here in Santa Barbara. Um, and this does have over on the, in the front here, uh, some nice wide windows. All righty, this um, is an older home. This was built about 1880. It's a fairly simple Queen Anne style. There's a nice um, two story bay window here in the front. And this has a very nice color scheme for, uh, for a Queen Anne style. It has a, it looks like some sort of a muted blue here. Now, this one was built about 1920. And by now you could probably tell it's craftsman style. Uh, it's got the um, uh, exposed rafters here, okay, with the decorative braces underneath. This, the, the, the bottom part of the porch posts are square. It does have some round columns here, which would be more like colonial revival. These might be replacements or they, you know, somebody might have just wanted uh, something a, a little bit different on their house. And the color scheme, uh, again, the gray with the white trim is very popular here. Uh, and that's uh, works with uh, colonial revival. Now, this is an interesting one. Um, this was built about 1904. It was originally uh, the Blanchard Gamble School, uh, which was a boarding school for girls from about 1904 to about 1905. So who, who would know that, that there was once a school on Valerio? Um, and um, it, it's uh, kind of a, the style is a colonial revival, but also a combination of four square. And the, uh, the, the trim around the porch here is a very colonial revival, as are the shingle, I'm sorry, the um, shutters around the windows uh, would be typical of colonial revival. Uh, this one does have a hipped roof. And uh, let's see, you can't really see the balconies from here. Uh, in the 1930s, according to the city directory, the architect Windsor Sewell and his wife lived here. Sewell is spelled S-O-U-L-E. And Windsor Sewell, by the way, designed the band shell that's at the in Pershing Park at the corner of Cabrillo and Castillo that they're uh, now just recently in the last week or so talking about um, restoring that. Um, and now back to this house, this house was actually an inn for a while. It was the Bayberry Inn. And our last house is uh, another craftsman. This was built about 1919. Uh, craftsman, again, a low pitch to the roof with decorative brackets underneath. And we've got some exposed rafters here all along here and over the porch. Um, again, uh, the gray and white colonial uh, color scheme. And uh, I want to thank you for taking the tour. I hope uh, nobody's got any blisters. <laughs>